One of two, two of two. Don't forget to zoom in so they can see that you do indeed have both parts. <laughs> You can't have those on you on YouTube. They're my robot arms. Robot arms. Or maybe they're robot boobs. Robot boobs! <laughs> Look, you can lube your wheels, babe. Does it go on the answer? Parts. All right, well, we look over the machine. I'm going to give you the forewarning that we know just enough about pouring concrete to be dangerous, and we are in no way, shape, or form experts in the field of pouring concrete. So I'm just panning across the components so you can kind of see that they're they're the very industrial type components uh, that should be easily obtained if one were to one were to fail. Uh, you should be able to go to Granger or something like that and pick up anything on this machine. Right here? Is that going to work? Yep. He says it'll work. It'll work? Okay. So these tires are not inflated, so they're a permanent tire. All right, so two 60-pound bags easily fit in the machine at the same time in the hopper. Um, I don't believe you'd be able to fit two 80-pound bags uh, in there without having to heap them. Okay, so this turned out like crap. So um, I believe I needed to do more water. I couldn't ever get the cream to come to the top, so we scrubbed and scrubbed, and it's just like a dry packing at this point. Um, so I needed more water, and kind of the best area is where we had the mishap with the water when I was pouring it, so. There she goes. Attempt to number two. <laughs> All right, so uh, the first step was a failure and I, I made this one square because I actually didn't end up liking it round like the way I made it. Um, it 
it, it looked like crap. <laughs> there was really nothing about that first step that turned out very good. Um, so I'm mixing it quite a bit wetter on this one, and uh, that definitely, definitely helps. Uh, so we, we didn't struggle nearly as bad on this first step. Okay, so we are getting better, but we still suck. So, super helpful hint if you've never done concrete before, like us, uh, wetting it down a lot before you pour the concrete helps a ton. Um, we, we kept compensating for not having wet ground and sucking the moisture out by making really wet mix. Um, and then that was basically inconsistent once we got to the point of finishing. So she is wetting that down. We have lots of these rocks on our property, so we're using them kind of as backfill. And then we have little rebar studs. You can see those in the shadow uh, sticking up. And then once we get the uh, concrete in, we will uh, add the rest of our rebar. So I just kind of start pouring and then I throw in rebar cross section. So what Aquila's doing there is trying to tap the tap the front so that it uh, hopefully will be more solid on the front once we take the form boards off. Um, it didn't seem to work very well, but uh, I heard kind of after the fact, uh, Austin, I talked to Austin, and I guess if you stick a DA sander on there with no sanding pad, uh, just to vibrate, uh, I guess that will help make the front uh, on the form board pretty smooth. So uh, that would be worth a shot. I'm going to try that on the next next project we do. All right, and so this isn't immediately afterwards. This is about 45 minutes after uh, we poured. Um, and then as you start kind of working it, it starts getting wetter and wetter on the top. It's kind of odd how that happens. Um, I end up always, it was really hot out. We were over 100 degrees. Um, so I was doing this, uh, this step probably while it was wetter than it should have been. Um, but it kind of felt like once I got to a certain point, uh, it, I couldn't work it anymore. So I would work it with a trowel. Uh, let it set again for a little while until it was, you know, where you could leave your fingerprint in it, and then I would broom it. All right, and I sped this one up a little bit, but uh, it's funny, the more steps we do, the easier it gets. Um, at the beginning, we're running around like chickens with their heads cut off, uh, and then by the end, it's kind of a lot more lax. Uh, it's, it's just really weird. I don't feel like I'm doing anything different, but um, I think we were under the impression we were in a lot bigger of a hurry than we actually needed to be. Uh, I think that was, that was kind of where we were at and it made everything harder. So now we're forming up the new, the next step. Uh, I haven't really filmed this part yet, but all we do is um, overlap them. I'm overlapping about two inches. I have my rebar poking up. Uh, then I, I pretty much level the form out, except I have it going uh, downhill just a little bit so that the water will pour off the front of the stair and not accumulate at the, at the, heel of the stair, I guess. You got the toe of the stair and the heel of the stair. Um, so it's going a little bit downhill just so to keep water from building up on those steps. So that was the, that was my uh, theory on that one. We'll see this winter how well that worked. Now, while she wets that down, I put on a, uh, I'm putting a brace on, so it's hard, hard to brace the middle. Um, so what I've been doing is just going from one step to the next step, uh, all the way down. And then on the very first step, I got a stake in. So it, uh, uh, it's basically just a, domino effect of, of braces, but it seemed to work pretty good. It doesn't, the concrete doesn't push super hard on the board, but if you don't put that, uh, the front of your front, front of your form board would definitely be bowling yeah, out. Right. Awesome. Yep, yeah, Sean. Hey, it's hot.
go. I got it. No, I did that on the side. It was I hit the I hit a post with it. I hope it's ruined forever. I know. How is anyone gonna know it's a mud mixer? Okay, so I had one complaint that I haven't gotten to yet in this video of the mud mixer, but I just got a package from mud mixer. And I think this is going to address the problem that I was gonna complain about. Maybe. And the problem is Gavin can't open plastic mailers with bubble. <laughs> it is. Does it really? That is absolutely hilarious. So the problem was the switch got a, a little bit of concrete dust in it and it didn't work anymore. You couldn't get it to function. The only way you get it to function is to hose water down the switch to try to loosen up the concrete so you can flip it, uh, which is not, obviously not ideal. So uh, obviously they knew that was a problem. They sent a new switch. So that is absolutely hilarious. I didn't even get a chance to review them uh, about it yet. So, all right. So if you ended up with this switch on your mud mixer, as you can see, I can't even, there it goes. Uh, it just fills up with junk and you can't use it. Uh, it was my only complaint about this machine. And then of course they sent me a new one before I even had a chance to complain about it. So that's pretty cool. So if you have one of these and you don't have the switch, reach out to them. They obviously have uh, those switches unless they had a supply chain problem and they just did what they had to do to get these things out the door. If, you buy, if you're buying one after you watch this, most likely it'll probably come with the new switch. That would be my guess, but you never know. And there we go. So I'm going to double check on the directions. It shows you how to wire it. I'm going to make sure that it's the same um, before I disconnect it. Okay, so the wiring is exactly the same from this switch to that switch. So Reverse is just momentary. Cool. All right, guys, so final thoughts on this mud mixer. So um, in full transparency, I was expecting to feel like I overpaid for it. Um, and then to be honest, after we put it together and stuff, I still felt like it was a little overpriced. Um, but then after using it and seeing how, how everything works, and there's a lot of shape and design into this thing that you don't really realize um, until you go to use it and how it mixes the exact same when the hopper's full, when the hopper's empty. It mixes the exact same uh, even if it's slightly pointing downhill. Um, I, didn't, I never really ran it while I was pointing uphill. I didn't want water to come back into the hopper, um, and I'm, it, it can. Um, I, whether it would or not, it's a different story uh, because the concrete would be taking the water. But uh, anyway, I, I, I did have it pointing downhill. I felt like I really needed to keep it level at all times. Um, so I did. So um, cleaning it super easy, having that built-in water hose, uh, that just, it's just convenient. Having that hose right there, you don't have to switch them, you don't have to have a T, you don't have, you're not getting tangled up in hoses. Um, that's really good. Uh, I never have the, the motor uh, overload or circuit or anything. Um, it doesn't seem to draw a ton. Uh, it never seemed to labor. Uh, or anything. It always sounded the exact same running it through. It, it, there was never any situations. Um, one of my bags got wet uh, before I got it. I bought it and I poured it in and it had really hard clumps in it. Uh, and I was expecting, I'm like, oh crap, these are going to get down in there. It's going to really mess things up. It didn't. I, I pulled the big clumps out, uh, all the littler clumps. It must have just been able to break them up and uh, and shoot them out and I never noticed them. So uh, that was kind of cool. So I have ran two pallets of 
concrete through this thing, um, and then seven bags of 70, of 80 pound sacre high strength. Um, all the same concrete, just some bags were 60 pounds, some were 70 pounds, um, this, or 80 pounds, I mean. The 80 pound bags mixed different than the 70 pound bags in the sense that they obviously came from a different plant. Um, the 80 pound bags seem to be higher quality concrete. Um, that may be different uh, in your scenario, but for some reason it felt like higher quality concrete than the 60 pound bags. The 60 pound bags were very, very pea gravelly. Um, like it seemed like it had an abundance of pea gravel. Uh, and then the 80 pound bags seemed to like dough coming out. It was really nice. It was a lot easier to work with than the 60 pound bags. But uh, next time I buy concrete, it may be totally different. Uh, but that, that was my scenario at this time. So um, my only complaint on the machine was the switch. They fixed that before I had a chance to complain about it. Um, I was running on my mix uh, around 70 was was where I was having the best of luck finishing it. Um, but I have somewhat low water pressure. So I have a feeling if you're on city water and you're around 80 pounds or something, you'd be around 50, 55, somewhere in there. Uh, if you're doing a fence post, obviously you're gonna mix it a little bit thicker because you want it to hold that post somewhat rigid. Uh, so you'll, you'll be less, but it has no problem mixing really thick concrete if that's what you wanna do. That's the mistake I made on the very first step. So. That being said, uh, these are going to get knocked off. I 100% guarantee you, you're gonna start seeing these things. And my guess is it's gonna be red. Um, that's my guess. If that happens, keep in mind you decide to spend $1,000 less or whatever, how much less they're charging. Keep in mind that you are buying your neighbor's stuff from the robber that robbed them. Um, that is essentially what you're doing when you're buying knockoffs like that. Uh, it, they didn't put all the money and time and energy. I'm pretty sure this is a startup company, so you're really messing with a small company. Um, they, they they basically stole a lot of that a lot of that uh, initial investment from from these guys at Mud Mixer. So just just keep that in mind when you're when you're looking at those knockoffs. Plus. The customer service on this thing is obviously really good. Uh, they sent me a switch before I needed it, um, you know, because they knew they obviously had problems with them, or maybe maybe they just ran out of these switches and they were on back order, so they just temporarily did that and then sent these out when they could. Uh, but either way, it's pretty stand up, uh, I, and I, I was really impressed uh, when that switch just landed in my mailbox randomly. So um, that being said, uh, I don't feel ripped off anymore at this at all. Uh, I believe. The steps that I did, uh, what I have into them with, a, with the mixer and all the supplies I bought, the concrete and the rebar, I used fiberglass rebar, um, if you didn't notice, um, and all that stuff, it, I think if I were to have this done, it probably would have cost me a lot more than I have into it. Granted, it probably would have looked a little better, but if I were to do it again, uh, I, I believe it would be right up there with, I'm pretty confident in it now, I believe I could actually pour uh, this and, and actually have it turn out really good uh, from now on. So I'm hoping that's the case. Anyway, let me know what you think. Uh, and then make sure you follow the link in the description below for this. Uh, I have the Amazon link. Uh, it still ships through Mud Mixer, but if you buy it through that link, uh, or at least do other shopping through that link, it will, uh, it will help support the channel. So uh, thank you, and uh, we will see you again real soon.